Hello, and welcome to episode 60 of Nintendo Therapy, a show about the latest Nintendo news and rumors, and a celebration of all of the things Nintendo. My name is Kevin, and with me this week in Mute City to talk about Formula Zero Racing, Plumber vs. Gorilla Tennis, and whatever animal fighting sport Pokemon is, is Harrison. That was a lot. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about all of it today. <laughs> and Sean. I like when plumbers and monkeys fight. <laughs> and if uh, the listeners can't tell, I am kind of fighting a cold, so my voice is probably very different. Uh, it, it's lucky I have a microphone to talk into, because if you were in the room right now, you probably couldn't even hear me. I'm talking so low. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll fight on. I also sprained my ankle this week. Not a good week for me. I say, you're, you're doing real <laughs> we don't need We don't need that, though. <laughs> we don't we don't need your ankle this they do not want me to go to work like the universe said you don't go to work right now well, don't, um don't, 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 don't you work at a hospital though <laughs> i mean that that's that not seems, relevant that seems like the perfect place <laughs> <laughs> um can't come to work out sick <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, what's going on, everybody? How was your video game weeks? I'm almost at the end of Dark Forces. I get to the end boss, and then he blew me up. Nice. Into a million little pieces? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, uh, as boring as it sounds, still battling away Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Like I said last week, I've got like a 10-page document to turn into an episode at some point. Oh, nice. Finalize that up. Uh, It's going to be a lot of thoughts and it's kind of like I feel like the timing could have been a little better because I feel like everybody's kind of dropping their think pieces on Tears of the Kingdom right now. I've noticed that because Nintendo Life just did theirs. Yeah, so uh, everyone's had a year with it almost. I think it came out in May. So everyone's had a year with it and they've They've had time to collect their thoughts, and now everybody's putting those thoughts out there. God, it's so but weird. It's it's almost been a year. Years are the most important thoughts, so we will wait for those. <laughs> How about you, Harrison? What have you been playing? Oh, my, I, 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 I started the, the Stardew 1.6, and oh, my God. Like, well, well, I'm not going to talk about it too much because... One, it's not on Switch, and and two, like anyone interested in Stardew, I mean, if you're listening to this, it's better to just experience it on your own. I mean, there's just so much, and it's just, so when, it, 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 and it, it is beautiful. It's just when you dive into a, a Stardew update, because I always debate this myself. Do you start a new file or do you just continue on? Well, since I was since I'm playing on PC or, or Steam Deck. Um, most of my mods are gone, so I just started over. But I think when I start on Switch, I have a I have a save file which is like extremely organized, and I think I'm just gonna start from there. But there is okay. uh, there is a new farm type uh, which has uh, blue grass. So mm. it so if you're into Music? Yeah, so if you're into like farm, like uh, actually like having animals on your farm, you might want to try that. So I'm I'm both because I'm always going to be starting this game over and and trying different kinds of playthroughs. And um, they changed. Well, this is spoiler free, but they changed perfection in the game. They changed like a hundred percent to where I could to where I could actually do it now. And not not like get bored of it. So I'm pretty excited about it. And besides that, I uh, on Switch I played the demo to Pepper Grinder, which looks really good. Um, oh, if anyone likes, about that. yeah, yeah, you should, you should try it out. The demo it's only uh, three stages, and it's only about thirty minutes if you play through it one time. Um, it's it's awesome. I think okay. it's going to be the. I think I think it's going to be the next big like indie platformer on on Switch. It doesn't look like an easy game. Like if you want to try to get like all stars and everything, but okay. 
I think for fifteen dollars, um, I'm one hundred percent going to buy this game. It looks pretty awesome. Um, and then I want I wanted to ask you guys about Wrath of the Mutants since you're both here today. Yeah, so I'm really excited on my for that wish list, but that's going to be a sale game. I never get a chance to play it in the arcade, so I I'm didn't really either, excited so. for it. Yeah, it'll be cool, but thirty bucks is too much, so I'll wait. It's it goes along with what you're saying uh, here, though, Harrison. Is like there there is something always kind of off about playing arcade games on a home port. Um, they, there's something about that risk factor of having to put in another quarter when you get a game over that gets lost in translation. Yeah. I think, yeah. but I, I still play them. I mean, I have my one up arcade cabinet for the the Ninja Turtles, and I play it all the time. So, right. So your take is that home ports are always are always good because i'm seeing a lot of because i don't know anything about this series this game and the criticism that i'm seeing is that you had treader's revenge which was a huge success and you know relatively uh is this the right move it's an unusual one for sure um, i think they're just but, capitalizing on turtles kind of being a thing again yeah, especially since they got the new show coming out soon, too. Because Calabunga um, Collection did well, Shredder's Revenge did well. So, yeah, it, it makes sense to me to keep adding to it because they get the... I can see what they're saying. is like it's weird that this came out before a Shredder's Revenge 2. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's how I would have timed it, is put the next Shredder's Revenge out and then this. Um, putting it in the middle makes it kind of seem like you're just throwing everything at the wall and almost oversaturating the market but uh I i'm glad it's available though I'm, I'm always glad when things are made more available uh especially a game i wasn't able to play in arcades at all i i don't think i've ever had seen this game in an arcade either yeah i went to the dave and busters a few times while this was around and none of the three locations i went to had it so yeah it'll it'll be fun to play it uh, I think one had it and it was out of order. Now that I think, but whatever. Yeah. To, to be clear for for listeners, this is Ninja Turtles: Wrath of the Mutants. This is coming out April twenty third on on Switch. I think it comes out April twenty third on on everything on all, on all consoles and Steam. Um, I looking at the looking at the the gameplay of it and the trailer. I I like the the art style for some reason. Like. It, it almost feels like it's Y2K retro, like CGI vibes, which I know can seem cheap to some people, but and yeah, it's, very, the, and it, it's, it, it's extremely different too. The thing so. about that show that's funny is like they had to sacrifice so much for that art style in like New York City feels yeah. so empty yeah. um, <laughs> as a result. But like th that doesn't translate to the game. Like the game still looks, it looks like a video game version of the show. So, so that works. It works better for the game, maybe, than it did for the show, even. Very, very cool. Well, I, I agree. I mean, we can always use more beat em ups, um, and this is a, this is an interesting. This is an interesting direction they're going in. I, ha I had to talk to to the Ninja Turtle nerds on the Nintendo Therapy podcast. So, <laughs> I'm happy you're here today. The turtle nerds will be back at an undetermined time. If anyone is listening to this that liked that podcast, um, it's not gone. It's just we in limbo. Record, <laughs> we recorded a whole episode that we told you was coming that ended up uh, getting corrupted and we couldn't use, and we haven't re-recorded it since. So uh, someday, someday that show will be back, and we will be talking about uh, Batman versus Ninja Turtles. So anyway. Back to video games. Um, news. F-Zero Maximum Velocity is going to be added to Switch Online. Uh, and F-Zero 99 is going to get an update as well. So, gassing us up for that Switch 2 remake of the GameCube F-Zero game that's been rumored forever. I think they, they have something going on with F-Zero for them to keep you know spotlighting it this much. I'm, I'm very confused. So F Zero ninety nine, they're adding Mirror and a Mirror Grand Prix mode. So I guess that's just like doing things backwards, right? 
yeah. just, or, or, or whatever. Um, but I feel like I haven't played this game too much, but I hopped in this week and like it feels like there's a lack of content at this point. And it feels like even after the update, in the most basic game modes, there's just not a lot of people playing, which just might be like the times that I'm getting on, like the times times of the day that I'm getting on. But well, I never I played the other 99s they put out. Is it, is it compared to them? Um, is it like not a lot of content or is that just like par for the course on these 99 games? I think it's this. I think it might be a similar amount of content but I think overall Tetris has been the best um, the best game for it, the best genre, the best format. Um, I've enjoyed I mean I've enjoyed I think all of them, at least all the ones I've played, like Tetris, Mario, Pac-Man. But the issue is is that when I when I play it now, I know it's I know it's probably going away at some point. So yeah. I don't know if I don't know if consumers have just I don't know if either consumers are just too busy or they've lost hope or 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 this game is actually doing well because Nintendo doesn't disclose anything as far as <laughs> right. as far as how as, as as far as how well these games are doing. But it sure seems like this game is lacking something for a game that's been out for this long. Well, yeah, and I'm sure there's gamers out there like you touched on, which I'm one of them, where if something seems like it's not going to be around forever, I don't even try it because I'm like, well, what if I get obsessed with this thing and it's taken away from me someday? Yeah, yeah. So I, I tend to avoid those types of things. I mean, I tried it when it came out, but I didn't stick with it because it had a very limited appeal for me. Yeah, I played it a few times because I, I love to do those things where you collect the... um. Oh, what is it called? You know, you use the Switch Online points and you buy like the little icons. Oh, for yeah, your, yeah, yeah. Your avatar. I'm always doing that. And I think one week you had to launch and um, you had to pretty much get into the, the, you had to get past all the trials to earn the points. So uh, that was the only time I did it. Uh, F Zero, what, velo- Maximum Velocity is the third installment. And which means we have the first three installments on Switch Online going all the way up to GameCube, I believe. So that's cool. Um, just yeah, I'm looking another... forward to trying it out because I kind of like the GBA racing games. So Yeah, it feels like the perfect type of game for the GBA app. You know, it's racing is like the perfect thing to throw on if you've got a couple of minutes. And the fact that you have save states, you right. can... You can save in the middle of a of a I don't know what they call their cups their their tournaments whatever you want to call it uh, and come back to it later. I can't remember if I've played this one or not, so I'll so, so I'll check it out. And yeah, I mean, uh, racing would be wrapped there with like beat 'em ups and like the the pick, easy to pick up, you know, the the why not, you know, just it should be on the service. Yeah, especially since, like, uh, we've talked about in other episodes, Nintendo needs to build up their other brands and not only focus on Mario, Zelda, and Kirby. Yeah. Uh, we need to get more Metroids out there, which they did They did a good job with Dread. It's time to put Prime 4 out uh, or put the other Primes on there, do something. They Or Metroid Zero Mission, also not on there yet. Um, they build more awareness of F-Zero, you can't really do much with pilot wings because the one that's missing is the 3DS pilot wings, which they can't do. Um, what are some other Nintendo franchises they ignore? Kid Icarus, they need to yeah, yep. put something back into that. Star Fox, we always bring up. Ice Climber 2. Yep, that, that's going to happen now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I think that's all the F-Zero uh, enthusiasm we have this week. Uh, I will definitely be playing this when it drops. Oh, Hopefully yeah. the randomizer picks it soon. All hail the randomizer. <laughs> Next up, the Pokemon Company takes down large Pokemon fan site Relic Castle, which was a site that basically directed you to fan-made Pokemon games. Oh, <laughs> Okay. 
Harrison, how do you feel about this one? You're you're our Pokemon. Um, uh, what what, is, what do they call it on the news when they have like a, a special pundit? I don't know. Pundit. Yes, you're a Pokemon, Pokemon pundit. pundit. Poke pundit. Right. Um. So I yeah I, I I did a good bit of writing on this one. Um. <clears throat> Kotaku was the original per was the original uh, outlet to to release this news article and there isn't very much disclosed as far as as the information that we know um it's said that the dmca was from the pokemon company international um and we can pretty much assume that um but we still don't really know if that's in connection with nintendo or if nintendo did in fact uh Release this DMCA. Uh, Relic Castle is a is a nonprofit. Uh, it often specializes. It would specialize in a lot of fan made games, which have its own legality. Uh, so I'm not too familiar with Relic Castle. I use sites like Poke Community and Poke Harbor, which are very similar and are probably. Uh, a little bit stressed out right now with the cl- the closure of this other nonprofit Pokemon site, but there can be lots of issues still with a nonprofit breaking DMCA. So I'm hesitant to kind of give any sort of judgment because a site could easily break DMCA and that creates lots of legal issues. The easiest or most common one to think of when thinking about fan-made games are when pre-patched games are uploaded to sites. And pre-patched games are 100% illegal. I don't know what happened. Was it that? Was it illegal donations made to developers? Don't really know, but the biggest... Um, debate I've been seeing on on forums this week is really um, should we consider should we take in consideration all of the decisions the Pokemon company makes also being decisions that Nintendo makes in my opinion it's yes um, in my opinion it's Pokemon and the companies that own that you know the, the, decision, the decisions that are made reflect, you know, those companies. But a lot of people want, want to differentiate and say, no, like, you know, you can judge a Pokemon company, but don't judge Nintendo because it's not Nintendo. So I'll kind of leave it there. Like, like what do you guys think? Because this is kind of a bigger conversation. Yeah, I honestly think if Nintendo wanted to allow it, they could. They have enough, you know, sway in the Pokemon company to say, no, we're not going to pursue this. You know what I mean? So it, it's, um, it, you know, they're they're committing, uh, 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 man, I'm blanking on words. <laughs> they're it's it's like, um, you know, they're they're they're, they're an accessory to the crime at that point. Uh, it's uh they're an accessory to murder we'll say right and and again we have to be hesitant that but that we don't know it could have been a dmca that was very valid uh sean what do you think i mean i'll conspiracy theory out a little bit i i wouldn't be surprised if nintendo was mainly the ones going hey um they're they're using our thing because I, I don't know, does, has the Pokemon company really gone after people for the most part? I feel like they kind of hang back a little. Um, as far as far as as something like this goes, I don't think so. But it could be just the beginning of them trying to kind of tighten up on, on these fan-made games. But I also think that while... Nintendo or Pokemon Company, while they might make silly decisions sometimes, I think they do. I think they do live in reality, and they do know that one hundred percent of this site of this website is backed up. It's on the Wayback Machine. Yeah. Um, we have archives of every single Pokemon Pokemon fan made game that would ever be released on the internet. You know, like 
they know as well as anyone that once it's on the internet, it's on there forever. Right. So, um, I'm always hesitant to to jump to conclusions, even if I even if I'm familiar with the company, because I mean, if there were external links on that website that led to donation links that were going towards developers, and then that is 100% illegal. Mm-hmm. And it and it is what it is, and it's hard to monitor sometimes those things on those websites. But could it be malicious? Sure, it could be. Nintendo gonna Nintendo, as they say. <laughs> and even though this is Pokemon, uh, yeah, that's just what they do. They get they they don't want people out there playing with their toys. They want to supervise the toy playing as much as possible. So, uh, I I think. Um, if you're upset about this, it's like, well, you it's unfortunate to say you're going to have to get used to it. You know, this is just how they operate. It, p- people of Relic Castle always knew that this was a possibility. The, 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 the same way yeah. that like we have the same way that like we have a Nintendo podcast and we know if that if we got popular enough, there's always a chance that we could get we could be taken down. Same thing. Wishful Hope thinking. Make us that popular, please. <laughs> make, make us so make us so popular that, that we get canceled, guys. Come on, come on. So we have to change the title to "Video Game Nerds." Oh wait, oh, wait, wait. No ter- therapy. I'm confusing, <laughs> confusing the angry They're video all game the nerd. They're the same now. Angry video game nerd. Uh, therapy. Ninja Turtle nerds. Uh, Nintendo therapy. So we'll have to be video game therapy. <laughs> I'm sure it's taken. Probably. <laughs> I was surprised Nintendo therapy wasn't taken. And then we get some rumors this week about Nintendo uh, updating GameCube patents. So, of course, every time Nintendo whispers the name GameCube, <laughs> the internet is like, oh my God, GameCube games yep. are coming to Switch Online. And, I mean, it's one of the possibilities for what this could be. Um I still don't see it happening anytime soon, but w- w- what's everyone's thoughts on these rumors this week? I'm thinking it was, it's just, you know, paving the way for more remasters, maybe. Yeah. Can, can, we, should, we should put it in context. So so, so this came from a, a Spanish leaker, Nash Weedle, um, and in the translated tweet, it says, Nintendo seems to have GameCube emulation ready. It's recently updated a patent based on the system which joins other recent patents on cube console control, whatever that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and these leakers need to like provide like more, like where is this all coming from sometimes? Because like, if it's a patent, just share a link to the, the patent, you know? So, yeah, cause so- I'm wondering, couldn't this also just be like, say they wanted to release, um, What's a GameCube game? Uh, we'll, we'll go with Mario Sunshine. All right. Say they wanted to re- re- release Mario Sunshine, not even for Nintendo Switch Online, but as a game playable oh, on Switch Two. Yeah. Like, wouldn't wouldn't they also they, they would file a new patent for uh, GameCube technology for that? So it could just be more GameCube games getting re released on the next Switch system separately from Switch Online. It it could be nothing. It, it could be, be nothing. It could be it could, it could be absolutely nothing. But the way the tweet was worded, uh, people immediately are going to jump to switch online because it's emulation. Uh, well, let, let's remind people too that like there was a period where every couple of years Sega would renew their patents for the Dreamcast. And every single time the internet was like, the Dreamcast 2 is coming. Then Sega is going to put out a Dreamcast 2. It's, like, it's, it's just normal procedure for these companies. It's not what the, what that means. So um, it, like you said, it could be anything at this point. I'm still, and I would love to be proven wrong, but from where I sit, I feel like they have, put so many key GameCube games on the Switch already yeah. that it would be weird for them to do a Switch Online channel for it. But who knows? They, they could double dip. They could say, okay, the Switch is over now. We got our sales from those titles. Um, 
Sunshine was part of a limited collection. Yeah. Technically, technically the Pik- the Pikmin games are the Wii versions of those games. Um, what else have they put out? Uh, Prime. We got rumors. What's that? The Prime remaster. The Prime remaster is a remaster, right? So, like, maybe they 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 put out the others as just straight up GameCube games. Um, Luigi's Mansion. They've been oddly protective of because they remastered Luigi's Mansion 2 instead of putting so maybe they have plans for that to come there, there there's there's so many there's so much they could still do uh I think and it's this is kind of a weird idea so maybe it would work because Nintendo's just kind of weird sometimes like what if when the new system comes out like they just give us a couple of GameCube games on Switch Online. And it doesn't even need to be like its own channel. They could just literally just put the games on the service and and let us download through like oh, through, like cloud yeah. play. So like the next Switch comes out and an incentive is like if you have Switch Online, if you already have the service, you get the new system and right away you get Wind Waker Twilight Princess. Um, or you get Luigi's Mansion, as you said, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. On, on that online service. Is it is it too weird of an idea? I don't, no, I don't know. I could see Just, them doing that. Like it's it's fun to think. No, about. I think they would stick to. Um, I think they would stick to doing it the way they've been doing it now. I mean, I get what you're saying. But I still feel like uh, I feel like it's going to be more just individual releases um, on their schedule. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Those are two we haven't said. Um, But uh, yeah, I feel like it's just going to be more like stuff keeping to their own schedule, putting them out little at a time. Breadcrumbs. Uh, I mean, there's only one Kirby game on the GameCube, so it's pretty much a failure of a system from Nintendo's perspective. Like. It's the There's racing Kirby, game, right? Yeah, that Kirby Air Riders game. Yeah. So there, there's not 47 Kirby games to bring over. So, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting way to look at it. But I, I don't know. They could do what you said, Harrison. I just, um, I don't know. I, I, I tend to like not believe companies are going to do anything different, which is weird because companies Mm. do different things all the time. That's how they're constantly getting new sales is they're like, Hey, try this out. But, um, but yeah, I I think it's just going to be more of a trickle of individual sales on the eShop. Um, like it's been, well, I'll, well, I'll say this just to close. There's two things. One, I, I think you're right. It's just a fun speculation. I think, they're not going to change things. And two, I think they are going to change something to incentivize us to buy a new system yeah, with the I online service. I, and, and, and that might be like, we're just going to give everyone Mario Kart 8. It could, it could, it could be that. <laughs> like, like it's been like, it's been like two generations now. We're going to give everyone mm. Mario Kart 8 that has the online service. It, it Honestly, could be like, to tell you the yeah. truth, this thought just occurred to me. I think they could sell a, a Switch 2 with like six months of Switch Online or whatever. Um, I think they could do it by just putting a little more effort into marketing the Switch Online because I still see these people on the internet who don't even know what it is. Like There are people who don't know you can go play Mario 64, Star Fox 64, Ocarina of Time, all these great you know, Nintendo titles that are Nintendo 64 games um, on your Switch. It, it, like people, I feel like there's, I feel like they're not marketing it well enough. They put it like on the box for the Switch 2, you know, a big Mario 64. What are some other huge games that are on there? Well, um, it should be, you, yeah. It, it, it should just be like when you just open the game, when you open up your Switch, it's just right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, because like when I, when like I open, like I open like, like my steam deck and I'm just getting like bombarded with like yeah. 90% off this game. You got to buy this game right now. You got to buy it I right now. I think it now. is for sure getting overlooked by casual, like people who don't follow Nintendo news, you know, not anyone listening to this for sure, but 
the average person who just wants to play a Mario game on a Nintendo, uh, they they don't uh, they don't know about Switch Online, and they should because it's a million games on there for them. I feel like that's like Nintendo's thing. There's always like something with whatever their current console is that they kind of forget about. The online? Well, just like the the marketing (laughs) end of it. So, you know, the the Wii U, it was the the name. But, you know, they they always have like one thing where they're like, eh, we're not going to focus on that. I mean, I, I've given my takes over and over again when it comes to accessibility, when it comes to educating your fan bases on games that are on your system. They're horrible. I mean, they, they just are. They're, like, they're, I, living, they're living a generation behind, I think. They, they, I feel like they should make a bigger deal out of the fact they have Genesis games on there. Like, Absolutely. Hey, Absolutely. we used to be rivals and... Now you can play Genesis games on a Nintendo console. The thing that tends to come up whenever those Genesis games are mentioned, though, is I see people dismissing that a lot, too, online, of saying, like, oh, I mean, well, the the Genesis games on Switch Online are the same ones they've been releasing in collections, like, forever now. So I think I feel like they need to maybe get Dreamcast on there or get some Sega Genesis games that haven't been re-released a bunch of times. Uh, put a little more effort into that channel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, release. I mean, release some games temporarily. Like, 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 give us like a really huge N sixty four release, and give us you know a, a limited time to play it. And like, as soon as you open your Switch, like, because I know over on the side, that's like what everyone new- thought Goldeneye was going to be. Remember, yeah. because they yeah. they were so surprised they were able to get Goldeneye. Yeah, it's like I know like. Like over on the side, there's like that news tab, which I've never opened on my Switch. But like, yeah, it was like <laughs> I, a lot, a lot easier. It. Like, but like, even though like, because like most of most of the time, most of us are playing at home, and most of us like are always connected to the internet. There's no reason why it shouldn't just be like there. Like, play it now. Press A to play it now. Like, you don't need to open the application. You don't need to like go searching for it. Just play now button and i, and I yeah, think it's funny you mentioned easier. that news tab because um real quick just something i always think whenever i do look at that news tab is you can relate you can uh, rate at the bottom of the like news stories if you thought it was helpful or whatever you can give it i forget if it's a heart or a thumbs up i think it's a thumbs up um and i'm just like who is where is where is this data going? Like, I, I feel like this got has got to be something that only like one percent of users are even using. Yeah. See, and that's but, the funny thing is that they want you to rate their news channel, but don't rate the games on their actual yeah. eShop. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. It's like if you gave me a thumbs up, thumbs down system on the Switch eShop, I'd be thrilled. Like, if you just gave me just the smallest bit of transparency, the smallest bit of information to where I don't need to pull out my cell phone and look up the game on Metacritic or try to find some YouTube video because there's no trailer of it on the eShop. Because apparently Nintendo charges a lot for these for to have trailers on your eShop. Oh really? Uh, like Or even I, I I don't know like if this is a crazy thought, but have a link on the eShop straight to Metacritic. <laughs> like, c- kind of like how they partner, like how you can post things straight to Twitter from your, your Switch. They oh, could... kind of like how uh, s- the streaming services kind of will give you like the Rotten Tomato score and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Like that. I think Amazon does that. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Do that, Nintendo. Do all our ideas. Hire us. <laughs> Give us give us more transparency. That, like 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 that's it. And then I, I know the transparency is going to like eliminate some of this shovelware that you're putting out. But the shovelware has been absolutely ridiculous lately. And, and I honestly no don't think it would slow it down because it's not like Nintendo is making the shovelware. They're just allowing it to be sold yeah. on their store. So there's always going to be people making shovel. The whole point of shovelware is they know that the people buying it are only buying it because it's a dollar and they're not researching it you know so it's still going to be there what's the game i'm I'm trying to find it now i opened up my eShop. what's the game that just released this week and it's oh it's going to be it's going to be too slow um 
But yeah, anyways, I, I I wish there was a way to to filter out games on the eShop. Yeah. I know I've mentioned this on Twitter before, but like I want I want to be able to see games for all ages, but not see certain certain games on the eShop that <laughs> like I'm never gonna be interested in that, you know, have certain suggestive waifu whatever on there so you'd like to be you know, able to, to, to curate it more to your like actual interests can i'd like to be able to can, can i filter out words like hentai oh there's waifu. one of those like every week right <laughs> there's one of those every two days on, on there and like i'm just it would be so I just easy. stick it, to the voucher page and it would be, i just it would buy just what easy. nintendo tells me to buy <laughs> Because I'm going, I'm going to check the new releases. I'm going to check, you know, what's coming and everything. And and it would just be, it'd be much easier. Like on Steam, like if I don't want to see a game, I just press "Don't show it to me," and it's right. gone. But like, I constantly have to like to see these new games coming out. Like even now, even on the podcast, and I'm trying to find this title, I can't find it because I'm scrolling through pages and pages of you're actively of, of, looking for it if you weren't looking for it it'd be right there yeah uh so yeah I, yeah and, and i think about like you know like 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 if i was a kid like my parents let me play all ages games but they don't want me to see like waifu fiesta on the switch eShop or whatever the game's called it's a different time we live in a, a, a little bit. I mean, I remember, I remember when I was a kid, um, and from GameStop I, or Funko Land, I got a subscription to Game Informer, and mm-hmm. that was that was right around when Dead or Alive Three came out. And I remember <laughs> my mom getting. I remember my, my mom getting the magazine, the mail, and he and she's like, "Is this a is this a, a video game magazine? Is this like? Does it had like the girls like on the cover?" Yep. And yeah, Dead or Alive, like that, that series. I mean, they did a volleyball that, game for crying out loud. Like, I mean, that. so things are a little bit different now, but yeah. Yeah, back then it was a little bit different too. Remember they had that, 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 that there was definitely like a, a period of video games where they were doing a lot of that stuff. You remember they had that BMXXX game? Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Like just yep. nonsense. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's... That's all the GameCube stuff. I think we got like my, I keep I keep saying the same thing at the end. What's of your segment. amazing segue into Mario Tennis? See, well, you know yeah. Mario Power Tennis was great on the GameCube, and maybe they filed this whole patent to get us Just to play to some Mario that. Power Tennis. And if you're gonna play your Mario Power Tennis on your Switch Two, you have to make sure you play the prequel, which was Mario Tennis sixty four, or you're not gonna understand the story at all. <laughs> How's that? I have to say, I completely when I booted it up, I forgot it had an opening cutscene, and it was just <laughs> great. Oh yeah, I love. Yeah, they went about for it, it that generation. the 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 Mario Party games have a storyline, which is like they they just thought it was necessary. Well, I so uh, if you're listening and you haven't booted up Mario Tennis for N64 in a while, it it kind of has a little prologue. Where Wario and Waluigi are like in a rivalry with Mario and Luigi, and like all of a sudden, like well, it's all the Waluigi's other... debut too. It is, yeah. And then all the other characters show up: Donkey Kong, the princesses, and stuff. And then the sky gets dark, and Bowser shows up, and you think something's gonna happen, and he's just like, "Oh, you guys are playing tennis? I'm down for that." And I, I just <laughs> like how misleading the whole thing is and i'm like i think that's what the modern sports games are missing is some ridiculous through line like that so so mario tennis came out july 2000 in japan and august 2000 in north america like we said it introduced waluigi it brought back um princess daisy who had last been seen in nes open tournament golf and super mario land and that was it um, Sean and I were just talking before we started the show about how it's weird that Daisy's not in any of the Luigi's Mansion games. Yes. Yeah, they're very selective about when they put her in a game. 
Yeah, we need more Daisy. Daisy like, it up. Like uh, Peach Showtime. Like, why isn't she the the other playable character? Like they went went together or something. But you remember how big a deal they made out of it out of her being in uh, Mario Wonder? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That was that was gigantic. I was like, yeah, but, it's great that she's here. She should be here more. But yeah, I I thought I have to say the original Mario Tennis has a pretty solid roster. Although I don't, who are the unlockable characters? Um, let me see. I've got a full full roster here. Okay. Because um, I I didn't unlock anybody yet, but okay. Like, oh, so the full roster, full roster of Mario Tennis. Let me make sure this is specifically Nintendo sixty four. Yep. Mario, Wario, Luigi, Waluigi, Peach, Daisy, Baby Mario. Toad, Yoshi, Birdo, Donkey Kong, Bowser, Paratroopa, Boo, Donkey Kong Jr., which is another one that's like back from. Okay, so he must be unlockable because. Yeah, that's got to be his first appearance since like the NES, Donkey Kong Jr., because he's not in the country games. He's. Mario Um... Kart was the last one. Oh, yeah, Mario Kart. Kart. You're right, you're right, you're right. Because you didn't have regular donkey kong in that game so he's going to be unlockable okay you got shy guy you've got and then you've got these disposable for um i don't know if you had to link yeah these are trans transfer pack characters so okay so these are the if you, game if you yeah boy. paired it with the game boy version you could get alex harry nina and kate right or okay. just people just regular run of the mill people and... <laughs> And NPC I, I people. And is Alex the one that's in the, the story mode? It's been too long now. Um, I think so. Of the Game Boy. Yeah. Game I, 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 right, right. I, I think so. It, it's it's unique that, that this game has 16 playable characters, which to me feels like a lot, while Mario Power Tennis 2004 has 20 Mario Tennis Aces on Switch has 30. So, um, you it's, started... It's got the Sean... sweet spot. Yeah, like, I know that's a thing that's big with Kevin, is rosters getting out of hand. Well, so I, I mainly feel that with fighting games, because the thing is with fighting games, you end up repeating a lot of the same move sets and, like, fighting styles, and I feel like each character should be completely unique in a fighting game and like you know you to use street fighter as the gold standard like i guess you could argue that chung lee's kick is like e honda's slap move but and you got ken and ryu but for the most part it's like ryu doesn't control anything like dalsim you know what i mean uh vega is completely different than bullrog uh blanca completely different than e honda so uh that's how I feel like fighting games okay, should be, okay. but a, a, a tennis game, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it matters because everyone's just swinging a racket. So, <laughs> but uh, I guess you got speeds, different speeds in there, and different like power, different speed, uh, power. But, People have yeah. different abilities, but yeah, but there's I mean, only I, so much you can adjust that. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool that like this is the first Mario tennis and it's just got like different types of courts basically. And then the ring mode and the Bowser mode and that's it. Like, yeah, it's very uniform, simple. And I I was thinking about it and I like that they keep experimenting and adding different like modes to the newer ones. But for some reason, the simplicity of this one makes it so much more fun to me for for some reason, and it's been a long it's been a long time since I've played the Switch version, um, or Tennis Aces is what, what I should say, is that I'm not sure if in, if in, in Tennis Aces if it's the lack of content, or it's the lack of focus, or it's the incorrect focus on what that game should have been, because there might have been a lot of things. In the game, which I could call content, but God, I thought it was boring. I I, I I thought the new game was boring. Where when I had when I, when I play this game now, the N sixty four 
Mario Tennis or when I played it when I was a kid, like the mini games feel like there's like an endless amount of like replayability to them. Because you can, yeah. I mean, I mean it, because you can always do better. You can always get a better score, and sometimes it's not easy a, a, as well. So, I mean, have Am you I- guys? Have you guys played the new, like the other tennis games more recently? And do you feel like there's a, a lack of focus or a lack of content so anywhere? My go to is this one as far as Mario Tennis. And I, mm-hmm. Aces, I played the demo. The Wii one I liked, but that was kind of because it had the motion controls. I don't know if I played the GameCube one at all. I agree with what you're saying, though, about the different, like, mini games and stuff. That's something I feel like Mario Golf could have benefited more from. They kind of only really have that mini golf mini game, um, mm-hmm. and that's it, where they could have had you hitting golf balls through rings and um, hitting targets and stuff like exactly like this tennis game does. Um, but I, I can't remember. if the, I think Mario Golf came out first, so maybe this was just them coming up with well, more ideas same same developers so i, I yeah but I think, I think golf came out first so maybe yeah, this golf, is like golf came out first and maybe they were this like, was like hey, oh oh this is what we should have done there let's add them all to this yeah. tennis game but i really like mario golf on 64 i don't know 64 is like the sweet spot for the sports games for some reason 64 is 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 the sweet spot for party fun multiplayer games which is it might it's probably one of the many reasons why like that nostalgia has has stuck so so heavily to like where it's like too much sometimes to me but i, I yeah I, I just think that like n64 probably gamecube was, was perfect for like just making a making a really good multiplayer experience because in this game i mean you can play you can play co-op you can play against each other. You yeah, can play yeah. single. You can play doubles. There's and then when you throw in sixteen characters, then you just have like so many different kind of kinds of combinations and game styles that you can play. So my my favorite match I played because I Donkey Kong is pretty good in this one. He the other ones he varies, but it was me versus Boo. And I don't know why, but I was consistently slamming him in the face with the ball through the whole <laughs> match. And that's how I won. And it was really, really good. But I'm still not that great at the game. Like the second There's also a- something about the Nintendo sixty four where stuff like that is especially funny. Yeah. I feel like I feel like later systems, I don't know if we just got too the graphics got too good or what, but like this was like the last system where I remember just like stupid things like hitting someone in the face with a tennis ball was entertaining enough I, to keep I going. I think in the way, reason it works in this game is because there's no reaction by the character. It just dead <laughs> stops, hits them, and drops to the ground, and that's it. So well, I remember us laughing a lot about that exact thing in GoldenEye back in the day. Like, you'd shoot someone in the shoulder, and they would just still stand on guard like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember... I think it was maybe the first time we played this. We just thought it was hilarious watching Wario walk slow. Like, yeah. <laughs> we were just going back and forth. Like, it was just, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm still not good at it. Like, I got to the second tournament, and for some reason, the second, the announcer's like, match point, tournament point, whatever. I consistently screw up and just hit the ball right into the net. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> like, it's a know. very... Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a it's definitely an honest game, which is which is great. Where it's like if you if you if you mess up or you do bad, like you can lose. Um, so it's it is nice when you get a sports game experience that um, it's not like it's it's not artificial in that way. Like like you are you are deciding the outcome. If you hit the net, you know you get a fault. You you mess up. It, it, I guess it's uh, counter Nintendo Sports, but it kind of benefits from not having items and stuff like that in it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah tennis totally. Aces, Tennis Aces was like that, where where I just felt like, especially where I felt not like not everything too, needs to be Mario Kart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where 
like, I felt like it was too much. And then it had it had a story mode which was so incredibly bland. Um, so I, I I you know I'm getting kind of depressed talking about it because I hope Nintendo figures it out. I don't, yeah. I, I don't I don't know I don't know what that is, but like like there's no there's really no there's almost there's almost no good sports games on Switch. So the opportunity is there for us to have like a really good like Mario Sluggers game again or or, yeah. or, 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 or something of the sort. I'm oddly it's just, in the mood for for Mario basketball to come back. Yeah, like they like, only like just that, have what, once. They did yeah. two. They did two Mario three on three on the three DS. Okay. Um, we talked about them last week, and there was I forget what the other one was called. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was that, that was the main one. Uh, did they have it in the sports mix also? Yeah, I don't, I don't. Know, I think but... it was in the sports mix. Yeah, I'm. You know what? I can go back to last week's notes. It's in there. Continue talking. Uh, but so I don't. So I don't. I don't know what it is. Like like this generation of sports games by far was what was the worst. And yeah, it was in sports mix. And it, it would just be a good opportunity to to have games that sports games that are fun, funny, unserious, meant for meant for all types of players, whether you are big big into sports games or not. Um, but I I don't have a solution though for for, for how they it's probably it's probably a lot of it's probably a mix of things. Um, I'd love to see a Mario. I love to see a Nintendo or Mario Sports RPG. You know, something like that. But um, the pressing way of, so, of, of of ending it. But I I I had a blast playing this game. I found a really cool trivia fact. Uh, well, cool is in the you know eye of the beholder. But I found it interesting, and it says here that the toad that appears in the main menu is the most detailed model of a Mario character in any Nintendo 64 game at 109 uh, 100, at sorry at 1948 triangles the model features more polygons than even a full set of characters in a doubles match that's crazy <laughs> that is they interesting put all like, their detail into this menu toad we need this toad to look really good <laughs> did did any of you do any research or about about Camelot and, and that decision? No. Nope. Did you? Nope. <laughs> but no, no, uh, I but mean, then, I like, tried. I, I I should I should say I tried. If you're referring to like why it was added to the, to the uh, Switch Online, yeah, I tried to find it. I couldn't well, find anything. Well, well, no, I, I mean Camelot no, he, for Mario he, Tennis. He means the developers. Oh. Oh. So, so, so I, I was I wasn't specific, but Camelot being the developer for for, Mar, for Mario Tennis, why Nintendo made that decision? I mean, I think it, I mean it was the right decision. Oh yeah, I guess. Well, there were a like, lot of Mario games on the Nintendo sixty four, so I think that was just their way of being like, we want all the Mario we can get, because for some reason we're not going to make a Mario sixty four two, um, even though they they did at one point have that in development, but yeah. Um, I think it was just part of trying to get as much Mario as they could. Um, so does anyone want to first share their ranking for this game? Sure, I like angering everyone. <laughs> I get it at number 11, so it's under Link's Awakening and above Ice Hockey, because, I don't know, it's just fun. I don't get sick of it. I mean, Ice Hockey is a good game. Uh, I was actually just talking at work the other day about wanting to replay that. That and baseball. <laughs> They're just oddly like very simplistic very great good games um this one's definitely got more going on than ice hockey but yeah i could see it is what i'm saying uh, i put well, it um more close to other nintendo 64 classic i ranked it just above yoshi story and that put it right below musha on the sega genesis which i i really liked that on rail shooter game so yeah this is a uh, a little bit better than Yoshi's Story, in my opinion. What number is that? Oh, sorry, that is sixteen. Okay, so it's at twenty. All right, and and I put it way up at number seven. 
Oh, wow. um, oh, so I'm the lowest one. So, so that, that's, in, that's really, wow. You, you really, it's like in everyone's it. top 20 though. Yeah. So, uh, this is below Super Mario Brothers two, which honestly, there's, there's a huge gap. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like there, there is a humongous gap between those two games. Um, because Mario Brothers two is just awesome. And then it's right above Super Mario World. Um, I, I I think there's enough enough here as a sports game. And there's enough content and there's enough uh, nostalgia and just it's my fa- it's by far my favorite multiplayer game we've played. If you take out like the the two D Mario games and don't consider those multiplayer, but it's okay. by by far my favorite multiplayer experience that we've played so far um i can't remember if it was if this game i put in my top five nintendo sports games and we did that like like a year ago so it's it's high up there for me i'm happy about it well it should make you happy so let's see if something will make you equally happy next week on the randomizer here Okay, next week we are playing Fire and Ice on the NES, which is uh, a North American title for the game. It was released worldwide as Solomon's Key 2, which is misleading because it's a prequel to Solomon's Key. So three reasons this title is confusing. (laughs) Um, Awesome. But yeah, Solomon's Key 2 prequel to Solomon's Key, Fire and Ice, however you want to think of this game, that's what we're playing next week. It is an NES game, an NES puzzle game. Do either of you have experience with Solomon's Key 1? Yeah, I've played played some of the original. I didn't even know it had a prequel sequel. Well, I... Yeah, it's probably one of those ones where you didn't know because they called it something completely different for some reason. I think, I, I think, I've, pl- I think I've played this. Um... But but it, you know in, in the future, guys, we we need to do like a top five like confusing ty- Nintendo titles or or something on here. I like how the box art's confusing too, so that that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's yeah, it's um. Well, which box art are you looking at? Because obviously they got. Some are, 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 are you saying like are you, are you saying this has has a warning sticker on it? No, it's so, you'd, you'd never know it was supposed to be a, a prequel sequel to the other game from the box art. So, so, oh, so, I get it. Looks like Tetris with a bunch of uh, ice cubes and they're on fire. Right, yeah. right. The, the, the box art I'm looking at on it, it has it looks like it has a green sticker. It says, "Warning: This cartridge contains logic puzzles that may be highly addictive. Caution and restraint are recommended." Which you're, you're which is, really not. You're kind of funny. This at all so <laughs> okay and if you are addicted to fire and ice slash solomon's key to slash solomon's key prequel let us know write us at nintendo therapy pod at gmail.com find us on all the social medias nintendo therapy <laughs> Uh, just keep in mind we're nintendo fans not nintendo experts so we don't know what we're talking about and we need you to let us know what we should be talking about uh leave a comment down below on spotify comment um solomon's key to confuse i don't know anyone got a better comment nope no i like that that that's (laughs) difficult to remember so it fits prove that you listened this far into the episode people Leave the comment on the Spotify. And we will be back next week with more Nintendo news and more fire and ice to talk about.